What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. Everybody's got their favorite that they like to collect. I'm no different. Uh, my personal preference is uh, other countries' bullion. Uh, love the design, love the variety. Uh, I just love collecting them. So today we're gonna go over my top 11. Why not a top 10? Well, I just couldn't weed one more out. So we're stuck at top 11. So I'll go over each one, what makes it my favorite, and uh, maybe go over some facts about each one and uh, maybe you'll learn something about each, maybe you won't. But we'll have some fun doing it. So let's get ready to roll. And coming in at number 11, the Austrian Philharmonic. This one is three nines fine, and it was introduced by the Austrian Mint around 2008. Uh, it was among the first to be denominated in euros at one and a half. Uh, the obverse features the great pipe organ. That's uh, actually really there, found in Vienna's Golden Hall. And the reverse has an arrangement of musical instruments. Um, and the phrase Vienna Philharmonic on top. That's what that means. Um, this competes in popularity with the American Silver Eagle and Canadian Silver Maple for liquidity. Uh, very popular, one of the most popular in Europe. So this is a good one to have. Uh, one of the few that does not have a reeded edge, but uh, this one is very popular. So number 11 is the Austria Philharmonic. Coming in at number 10, the Australian Kangaroo. This one is four nines fine, and it was issued by the Perth Mint. Uh, this particular kangaroo design came out in 2015, but that coin was actually only three nines fine. Uh, four nines actually came out in 2016 on. Denomination on this is a dollar, and the design is still the same in 2021, so it's continuing. Uh, this reverse side actually features the red kangaroo, highly revered in Australia. Uh, surrounded by rays of sunlight. This is a fairly popular series and it's really very highly liquid. So these are highly recognizable. And of course on the back side, we've got the queen, no surprise. But uh, yep, number 10, Australian kangaroo. Coming in at number nine, the Chinese panda. This one is three nines fine and it was first issued in 1982 by the People's Republic of China. Uh, it's been minted in three different cities over the years, and that would be Shanghai, Shenyang, and Shenzhen. Uh, pandas went from one troy ounce in 2015 to metric in 2016, so it's now issued in 30 grams. So 2016 and beyond is now 30 grams. Um, on the obverse, we've got the Hall of Prayer, and that's at the Temple of Heaven in Beijing. And obviously, I, th I believe that says um, People's Republic of China on top, if I'm not mistaken. So you see the year 2015, this is the last year it was a full troy ounce. And on the front, we've got our panda munching on some bamboo. Uh, these are really artistic coins and the design changes year after year, which makes them highly collectible. Um, there's a little bit of a higher premium on these if, you, if you're looking for them. Um, they're not all that rare, but they do carry the higher premium. So that is number nine, the Chinese panda. Number eight, the South African Krugerrand. Uh, anybody that's seen the movie Lethal Weapon knows where Krugerrands came from pretty much. I mean, they gained some popularity from there. Uh, one of the scenes, uh, I don't remember which one it was, but two or three, where they opened up the trunk and all the, all the gold Krugerrands came piling out. But this is a very popular coin. Um, we've got tr three nines fine on it, issued by the South African Mint. Uh, 2017, correct me if I'm wrong, was the first silver proof issue. And 2018 was the first year the Krugerrand was offered as a brilliant uncirculated silver coin. So on the flip side, we've got Paul Kruger, Africa, South Africa's one and only, first and only president. Um, yeah, pretty good detail on that one. And on the front side, we've got the Springbok antelope. Uh, it's the national animal of South Africa. The nomination on this is one rand, which you can see, stay in focus on the bottom right, you see that R1, um, that means it's one rand. So uh, it, this is a good one. It's, it's very collectible, hasn't changed much over the years, but uh, the Krugerrand is definitely very highly collectible. It's been going strong 
Uh, it started in gold form in 1967, and it really hasn't slowed down. So number eight, South Africa Crew Grand. Number seven, the Korean Phoenix. I absolutely love this one. It's one of my favorites. Um, I like anything with the Phoenix on it, and this is no exception. Uh, this is 3 nines Fine, issued by Comsco, which is Korean Minting, Security Printing, and ID Card Operating Corporation. Thank God they shortened that to Comsco. I would hate to have to say that on a repeated basis. Um, 2020 was the first issue of this coins, and the obverse features the Phoenix with a latent image. You can see it on the bottom left. I don't know if I can get it to change on camera. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Uh, not really. But it changes uh, the two words. There's two words in there, and that is Bong Huang. It goes from Bong to Huang, uh, which is interpreted as the name of the phoenix. It means mythical bird. So very cool coin. Got the security feature on it. Uh, on the back side, you see the two phoenixes on either side and the Taikuk, which is the Korean flag uh, centered between the two phoenixes. And this is just a beautiful issue. Uh, premiums aren't too bad on this. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty liquid. Um, no reeded edge. One of the few I have that really don't have the reeded edge. But this is a great one. This is actually one of my favorite designs. Love it. So number seven, the Korean Phoenix. Number six. This is the 2017 Falkland Islands Anniversary of Liberation issue. Uh, it's three nines fine, issued by the Pop Joy Mint which is located just outside of London in Surrey County. Uh, it celebrates the liberation of the Falkland Islands from Argentine forces in 1982. Uh, it's limited to 42,671 overall. So it was a pretty, pretty limited issue. Um, on the obverse, we all know and love the face. She's on it all. Uh, and let's see, so the denomination on this is one crown. Um, the Pop Joy Mint is actually Europe's largest private mint, and it strikes a lot of coins for various outlying British uh, territories. So, you know, they're they're pretty well uh, pretty well known. Um, so this is another Britannia Britannia issue, which anybody who's seen my videos knows I absolutely love anything with Britannia on it. Um, very nicely done with the frosting in the middle and the proof like uh, uh, inset. So oh, very nice coin. This is actually one of my favorites too. It's it's so hard to pick between them. So number six, 2017 Falkland Islands. Number five, another Korean coin. This is actually the 2018 Korean Chiwu Chan Wang. Uh, when I first saw this, this was one of the ones in the series that I absolutely had to have. The design is amazing. I mean, it's almost like a 3D effect with his sword. So this was so well done uh it, it immediately appealed to me so comsco has got it going on uh, they've got some great stuff coming out and this is no exception um so this is three nines fine it's considered a bullion metal and the denomination is one clay this is actually the third release in the chiwu series and it's another limited edition it's only forty-five thousand raw total so fairly limited um the obverse we've got again that frosted effect uh with the proof like metal, it's awesome. Uh, this is actually Chi Wu's shield. Um, and we've also got a, a latent security image on it. It changes from ag to 999. Again, it's so hard to get this to happen, but you can see the 999. I just can't seem to get it to change with the lighting I've got in here. So the latent image, you got the security image on there. Good luck copying this one. It, it's pretty secure. So beautiful coin, and the artwork is just amazing. Uh, Chiwu is a revered legendary figure uh, as a protector of Korea, and the name Chiwu Chun Wang is actually translated to Chiwu, the King of Heaven. So he is very highly regarded out that way, very highly regarded. He's a legend. So this is a, a good one to get, limited, and this is number five, the 2018 Korean Chiwu Chun Wang. Coming in at number four, the Libertad from Mexico. 
Uh, this is one of those coins that when I first saw it, I knew this was one I wanted to collect. Uh, I absolutely love the design on this. It's three nights fine. Uh, first debuted, the whole series debuted in 1982, but this particular design came out in 1996. Um, the obverse features the Statue of Winged Liberty, also known as the Statue of Independence, which is based on an actual statue in the middle of Mexico City, which uh, that statue was built in 1920 to celebrate its independence from Spain after 11 years of conflict. And on the reverse, we've got the uh, coat of arms of Mexico, the current one, right in the middle, surrounded by uh, 10 previous ones. So this is actually, it, it's, a, it's a heavy coin. It's, it seems solid when you hold it in your hand. It's bigger. This is just a beautiful coin to collect. So number four, the Mexico Libertad. All right, we're to the top three, and coming in at number three, the United States American Silver Eagle. I can hear it now. You live in the USA, and you're only ranking this third in your list. What's wrong with you? Um, nothing. I, I love this coin, always will, always have, and that's not going to change. Uh, but there are two other ones that I prefer uh, to this one. But this is a gorgeous coin. We all know the story behind this. I don't even have to go into it. Um, it's recognized all over the world, accepted as legit bullion, and it is absolutely beautiful. Um, the Walk in Liberty design was first issued in 1916 by Adolf Weinman. And of course, you've got the Heraldic Eagle uh, made by John Mercanti. Uh, everybody knows this is changing um, this year. So we're gonna get a different backside, different eagle. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings on that. There's something to be said about consistency and not changing anything. I mean, I'm all for good new designs, but it's gonna to be tough to see it. It's, it's been there since 1986. That's a long time, it's a long run. It's gonna be weird seeing uh, uh, the backside of these and not seeing that eagle. But when it comes to design, you can't beat this one. This is a classic. So number three, the American Silver Eagle. Number two, this is the 2021 Canadian Silver Maple. Uh, if you didn't know, the Maple was actually the second major bullion coin to be released, like just a little bit after the Silver Eagle. But this was also the first coin to be minted at four nines fine, uh, which made it slightly pure, you know, a slightly purer blend of silver. You're not getting more silver with four nines, you're just getting a pure blend of silver. Um, but still, it's pretty cool. It's a cool selling feature. Um, this coin's been around since about 1988. It hasn't really changed with the exception of a few improvements. It's pretty much stayed the same. Uh, the obverse features, guess who? Shock, I know. You're absolutely stunned. I get it. But, um, yeah. So why is this number two to me? Well, there's just something to be said about the simplicity of it. The design, the detail, and the leaf. The little uh, latent image at the bottom. Uh, if you, I'm, There's no way I'm going to be able to focus on it, but it does say 21 within that little security image, that uh, privy down the bottom right. So you've got the new radial lines going on here. Uh, this thing just shines. I love it. And like I said, it's a simple, simple leaf design. That's it. Um, they also started putting a coating on this to prevent milk spotting because this one was really prone to it. Um, these are very, very liquid, almost on par with the American Silver Eagle. Um, and believe it or not, this is the sugar maple leaf, if you didn't know. It was first designed in 1979 by Walter Ott. Um, it's become their symbol. So this is a great one to have. Uh, it shines like you wouldn't believe with the new radial designs, the radial lines on it. Very nice coin to have, very liquid, very recognizable. So number two, the Canadian Silver Maple. And number one in my collection, my personal favorite, this is the 2021 uh, Great Britain Silver Britannia. Uh, like I said, I love anything Britannia and this one is no different. This one is, awesome uh they really improved this with security features on it uh, and this is hands down my favorite they've gone above and beyond to make this one as nice as it is um 
So new security features on this. You got the uh, intricate wave pattern in the background. That uh, seems animated, kind of, it almost animates when you move the coin around. You can kind of see it, you can kind of get the idea on it. Um, you got a security privy on the bottom left that alternates between um, her trident and a padlock. I don't know if I can get it to go. You can see the trident, but I, you know, get, oh, there's the lock, okay, we got it. All right, so another cool feature. Um, you got tincture lines added to the Union Jack. I don't know if they're coming in. You can see them right there on the right. Just more detail and more design. And um, you can't see it on this because it really is tiny, but about right around the inner border, I'm not gonna be able to get it. Um, you got a little Latin phrase around the border that says, Decu et tunaman, which means an ornament and a safeguard in Latin. Um, this phrase used to be on quite a few English coins as a means of safeguarding against clipping, which was a very popular practice back in the day. They'd clip off, you turn in silver coins and they'd clip off some of the outer edge and, I mean, before you know it, you got a little bit of free silver. Um, so bottom line, I love this coin. I love the artwork. I love the security of it. I love the quality of the engraving. Uh, this was another one that I had to have when I first saw it. Not that we need to, but you know who is on the back. Uh, they could have done a little bit more. Personally, I mean, you've got the little dotted radial lines in there, but I would have loved to have seen like the continuing wave pattern there. But there she is in all her glory. Uh, I don't know how she's doing with the loss of uh, Philip, but uh, you know, we wish her the best. And there you have it, my number one. The 2021 Great Britain Silver Britannia, number one in my collection. And there you have it. Those are my top 11. I appreciate you watching. Um, give me a, give me a couple of comments down below. Uh, we're trying to establish this channel a little bit, trying to get some uh, momentum going with it. Uh, give me a couple of comments below on what your favorites are. You can do your top 10, top 11, top 20. Uh, what do you like to collect? What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite sovereign bullion? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear from you guys. Um, but that's it for today. You guys enjoy the rest of your week. Have a good one. And I'll catch you next time. See ya.